The deep learning models you've built so far have used transfer learning. Transfer learning is great because it allows you to quickly build accurate models even with relatively little data. But transfer learning isn't necessary on large data sets, and it only works when your use case has similar visual patterns to the data used in the pre-trained model. For example, a pre-trained model based on everyday photos won't work well for applications to satellite photography or for medical images from an MRI machine. So if you want to be versatile with deep learning, you'll need to learn to build models from scratch. Fortunately, the code for this is almost identical to the code you used with transfer learning. Let's see it in action. I'll show you an example based on the popular MNIST dataset, which contains handwritten digits. Then you'll build a model to identify different types of clothing from low resolution images using a dataset called MNIST for fashion. Both datasets contain 28 by 28 pixel images. We can load them from a CSV file containing all the data for all the images. This will be your first time loading all the image data from a single file rather than using Image Data Generator to load many separate image files. Here's how we loaded the MNIST data. To store all the images in a single CSV, each image is represented as a row of the CSV. The first column has the label, in this data, the label says what digit is shown in each row of the CSV. Was it a 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 9? The rest of the columns represent pixel intensities. The pixels are represented in the CSV as a row of 784 pixel intensities, even though the image is started as a two-dimensional grid that's 28 by 28. We'll use a data prep function to extract labels and reshape the pixel intensity data back to a 28 by 28 grid before applying our model. Keras has a two categorical function. We supply the target variable, raw label, as well as the number of different values. Two categorical returns a one hot encoded version of the target. So it represents the 10 possible values of the target with 10 separate binary columns. If this is new to you, we have a tutorial on one hot encoding of categoricals in the machine learning track. In any case, this gives us the target in the format that Keras expects it. Now we'll work on the pixel intensities. Raw.values gives us the data as a NumPy array. We use indexing to take everything after the first column because the first column was the label. We'll reshape this into a 4D array, which is indexed by the image number, row number, column number, and channel. The images were grayscale rather than color, so there is only one channel. Finally, we divide the values by 255, so all the data is between 0 and 1. This improves optimization with the default parameters for the Atom Optimizer. This function gave us an array of predictors, which I'll call x, and an array of the target, which I'll call y. Now we'll build our model. It looks like the model you built earlier, except the first layer is this conv2d, or 2d convolutional layer, rather than a pre-trained model. We also added another convolutional layer before the flattened layer. I need to specify a few arguments for each convolutional layer, the number of convolutions or filters to include in that layer, the size and pixels of the convolutions, which is called the kernel size, and the activation function. For the very first layer, I need to specify the shape of each image, but I won't need that for subsequent layers. In this case, I used two convolutional layers, though I could have used more if I'd wanted. As you saw with transfer learning, I'll use a flattened layer at some point to convert the output of previous layers into a 1D representation for each image. These models usually perform better if you add a dense layer in between the flattened layer and the final prediction layer. So I've added a dense layer with 128 nodes. Finally, we have the output layer, which is the same as the output layers you've written before. I compile it with the same arguments you've seen before, and then I'll fit it. Because I have the whole data loaded into arrays already, I use the fit command rather than the fit generator command that we used with image data generator. I supply the predictors, x, and the target, y. As you've seen before, I specify a batch size and a number of epochs. And finally, I want to get a validation score, so I use the validation split argument to say that 20% of the data should be set aside for validation, leaving 80% for training data. When I run this, I can watch the accuracy go from 10% when I first start training to about 98% pretty quickly. 
you can experiment with a few things to improve the model slightly. You can change the number of convolutions in any layer. You could add or remove layers, either adding convolution layers before the flatten or dense layers after it. Or you can change the filter or kernel size in any layer. When you increase the number of layers or the number of convolutions in a layer, you are increasing the model's ability to fit the training data. We call that the model capacity. That can improve a model that was underfitting, or it could cause you to overfit. So use your validation scores as your ultimate measure of model quality as you experiment with different model architectures. Now it's your turn to try this on the fashion data, building a model to detect clothing type. After that, I'll show you a couple of tricks to prevent overfitting and to make your models run faster.